Alright, so you may be wondering if you've seen and heard of this around, what is AJAX? Well, AJAX is, I, I don't even know what the acronym is, A asynchronous JavaScript and something else, whatever. Basically what it is, is it, it's allowing JavaScript, a client-side language, as in runs in the browser, to call a server-side language, such as PHP, to process some server th side things that JavaScript can't do and then send what it gets back to JavaScript to use. Okay? So to the user it's completely silent. User clicks a button, PHP file is called, PHP things happen, information's returned, and it's acting like as if JavaScript did the whole work. So it's really great for things that PHP can do that JavaScript can't. And let's take a look at one of those now and how to do this from scratch. So we'll create a new file on our server. We're going to call it uh, index.html. Notice, not a PHP file. Okay. Uh, we will also create a new file, and we're going to call that uh, IP address.php. We're going to go ahead and get the IP address of the user, something JavaScript cannot do. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to create a new text window to use. New text window. Okay, and let's go ahead and open this file and this file. Now, let's take a look at index.html. Uh, we're going to do our standard HTML head, close our head, open a body, close our body, close the HTML. I know there's more stuff that can go in here, but this is what we're going to do for now. Okay, now we need to go and grab... Uh, well, let's actually figure out what we want our page to look like. We need a button. So input type equals quote button, right? Value, what the button says, get my uh, get IP address, okay? Then we're also going to add on click event handler. There's a million different ways you could do a click event handler, but I'm just going to do it this way uh, just because. On click equals quote get IP. We haven't made this function yet. We're just calling it, okay? and close our input. Then we're going to line break and then do another input type equals text and this is going to display our results and we're just going to give it an ID so we can get to it later equals IP. Okay, Again, that doesn't mean anything now but it will. So we're going to save that back to the server and let's refresh our page and you see we have a button and a thing. If we click this, nothing happens. Okay, We don't have a form, we don't have any actions, that action doesn't do anything. So let's actually write some script. Well first thing, we're going to use jQuery to make our lives so much easier. So let's actually get the, jo the jQuery library. You can just head straight on over to the jQuery page, uh, just go ahead and load the home page, right click, view source, and just copy their Ajax. Uh, not their Ajax, their uh, script. This is actually on Google servers, not their own servers. So you can hotlink to Google servers all you want, not a problem. Uh, the only thing I wouldn't recommend doing this for your real site because it increases load time. It's better if you load jQuery from your own server. So we have jQuery now. And now let's open script tag so we can actually write some of our own script. Text slash JavaScript. You know, if we're going to do jQuery, we have to have some JavaScript. Okay, now we need to open our function. We need to call that function. We called it get IP. Open and close in curly braces. Now what we need to do is just use the jQuery Ajax function. Okay, if you need help on the Ajax functions, they are all listed on jQuery's website under the Ajax tab, all right here. Okay, but we're going to use the post one. We're going to, we're going to, we don't actually need to do this because we're not sending data. But I just always use this because it's just really short to write. Post and the we want to call the file which we called IP address .php. IP address .php. Uh, we we don't want to close it yet. We need to another parameter. So so the name of the file is the first parameter. The second parameter usually is variables which go in curly braces, but we don't need to, we don't need to send anything. We just need to call the function, which will be called once the Ajax is done. Okay? And then we're gonna pass it a variable in. So whatever PHP does and, and prints out will be in this variable called data. Okay? And that open and close in curly braces for, right? And then we want to close uh, the post function. All right, very simple. Now, 
what do we want to do with that variable? So whatever PHP did is now in this JavaScript variable called data. The hard work is done. What are we going to do with it? We're going to use jQuery to select that ID that we called IP. So not ID, IP. And we're just going to do dot val, which is how you fill in the value of it. And we're going to fill it in with that data. So whatever is returned from PHP, even if it's an error, it will be returned to data. And then we're going to spit it back. Okay. Again, if we do this, and we uh, and we check out our our page. Nothing's going to happen again. There's nothing happening. So let's actually write their PHP code. Now this will work if we just do something simple as let's open our PHP tags, close them, and we just say echo hello. Okay, echo or print will send information out. So if I refresh this page now, if I hit get IP, it's going to say hello. PHP is the one that said hello. However, you can do that with JavaScript. So let's do something that JavaScript can't do, that PHP can. Okay? We're going to echo out a IP address, the IP address of the user visiting the website, which is money sign underscore server, okay, opening square bracket, quote, and it's remote, uh, remote, I believe it's remote underscore ADDR, remote address. Close your square bracket, close your quote, and save. Now, when you refresh your page and you hit get IP address, it now shows you the IP address of the visiting website. Okay? JavaScript can't do that, but using Ajax, we just did. Now, what if you didn't know this? Well, there's a simple trick to that. Let's uh, go ahead and change our input type, let's go ahead and change this to a text area with uh, style equals width. Uh, let's do 500 pixels by height 500 pixels, make it nice and big, and we will give it an ID of IP again, okay? And then we'll close our text area. Now, let's refresh and see if we get a big spot. Okay, now we got a lot of information here. So, let's echo out everything that's in this server variable, okay? So we're going to echo, now we're not even going to echo, we're going to print underscore r, print all. In So if you ever have an array in PHP, you can use print underscore r to see what's in it, underscore server, okay? No brackets because we're not choosing part of the array, we're just simply printing out everything to see what's in here. We refresh and hit get IP address, and this is everything that is in that array. You can see it says array. Okay, there's the path, the content, our HTTP encoding, our host, our origin. You can see that, that I'm using what kind of browser, what kind of rendering engine. You can see that this was gotten with an XML HTTP request, which is AJAX, so it actually knows that. It shows you what my internet is. It shows you where on the server the file is. It shows you some fake information here. I don't even know what that is. It shows you the time. Okay, so all this is information that's available okay on that server variable none of this is available in JavaScript so this is just an example of what you can do and obviously we refresh that back to um, remote address and put this back to that we're back to our original here's our IP address so you can see that what Ajax is is it takes the power of PHP and integrates it with JavaScript. So this is those for you beginners who are just trying to figure out what Ajax is. This is how you do it. Once you learn a lot about PHP, then you can make your JavaScript that much more better.